Hello and welcome back to the lesson 3. It's solving multi-step equations. It is same to what we have studied in the previous lesson, that is one-step equation. Just that here there will be many one-step equations. You will see it now using problems, but the learning objective of today's lesson is to solve equation involving more than one operation, that is multi-step. Multi-step equation is the keyword. Solving multi-step equations. Uh, now, yeah, it just tells you what needs to be done, but we will see a problem in a while. This is important. Now, if imagine there's operation of addition, the opposite operation is neg negative, that's subtraction. If it's subtraction, it's addition. Multiplication, it's division. Or if it's division, it can be also written like this. It's multiplication. Why these are required? To make the steps easy. Now here you have a problem where 2a minus 6 equals 4. So in the last lesson it was just like this, a minus 6 equals 4, we take it to one's other side, over. But now first you need to add 6 on both the sides, it will become 2a minus 6 plus 6 equals 4 plus 6 because both the sides to balance the equation. Next. 6, 6 cancels, you'll get 2a equals 4 plus 6 is 10. Next, a equals 5. Why? Because you need to divide both the sides by 2 and the answer is 5. So this is a multi-step equation. Basically, you're doing plenty of steps. This is the only thing. Now, if you have understood the previous lesson, this is very, very easy. We can also do this in calculator very easily. Just type 2 x for variable minus 6 equals 4. We have done this already in the previous lesson and the answer is 5. So this is how we solve it. Um, even this can be directly solved and I will also solve it step by step. x plus 1 divided by negative 2 equals 15. Shift and solve you will get the answer negative 31. Now, over here, first thing is the division part because these two are together divided by two, right? So take this out. This is division. It goes to the other side, becomes multiplication. I'll write it directly. 15 times negative 2. This is multiplication now. Now, you will get the answer. 15 times 2 is 30, but it's minus 30 over here. And n plus 1. This plus 1 to the other side becomes minus 1. This cancels. n is negative 31. That is the answer. And we got the same thing over here. So this is all multi-step equations. I hope this is clear because it's pretty straightforward. The answer is already visible over here. But again, another multi-step. Take 4 to the other side first. It'll be 3m equals negative 15 because it'll be minus 4. And m, if it minus 15 divided by 3 would be negative 5. That is the answer of m. Uh, same thing over here. Sorry, the animations are not coming. Here, first, you need to multiply 7 times 4, 7 times, uh, sorry, 8 times 7. 8 times 40 plus 16 will be 56. And then you have equal to x minus 5. 5 goes to the other side, becomes plus. 56 plus 5 is 61, that is equal to x, and here is the answer, x equals 61. Um, we have some real-world problems, we'll look into these. These are multi-step real-world problems. Now, the student council raised two-fifths of the money they needed to cover the cost of the school dance with a bake sale. They raised an additional $150 selling raffle tickets. If the student council had raised Six thirty dollars. What is the cost of the dance? Write an equation for the problem, then solve the equation. Okay. So now what they're saying is they raised two thirds of the dance money from the bake sale, and raffle tickets is one fifty, and the total they got basically was two thirds of the dance. They have not given exact. See, first of all, let's see this bake sale and raffle tickets. So I'll write bake bake sale plus raffle ticket they got a total of they raised how much six thirty dollars 
okay now they have not told how much was done in bake sale but they have told how much was done in raffle tickets it's 150 this is 630 now bake sale was two fifth of the dance cost two fifth of the dance i'll write d small t. okay this is the important cost which we need to in which, which we need to find it is basically like the first lesson you know we need to read and write so two-fifth of the dance cost plus 150 dollars equals 630 now we know this dance cost is unknown that is what we need to solve they want to know how much was the dance cost what is the cost of the dance write an equation this is the equation and solve this multi-step equation all you need to do is you can put in the calculator or solve it directly uh, 150 goes to the other side it's 250 e d equals 150 other side that will be 630 minus 150 so it'll be um, 530 480 over here it'll be 480 and this goes to the other side will be d equals 480 multiplied by 5 by 2 so the okay now this needs to be done so the answer over here will be 240 240 times 5 will be 2400 half is 1200 so the dance cost will be 1200 so just by solving this equation let's just check the answers so it is two-fifth of the cost of dance c they have written c plus 150 equals 630 and you can easily solve it by multi-step multi -step equation you can add any number of steps but try to do it with as least as possible. One, two, three, more than enough. The answer is 1,200. That's it. Here, a sporting goods. Now, you better try this by yourself. Uh, pause the video, try it, and then let's continue. I hope you tried solving this. Basketball, a sporting goods store sold two-thirds of its basketballs, but eight were returned. Now the store has 38 basketballs. How many were there originally? See, now again, they have told two-thirds of the basketballs, I'll write B, were sold, but eight were returned. See, now this returned is very important. It's not minus. If you're returned, it'll be more, right? Initially, he had sold two-thirds of basketball, but eight were given back. So it's plus eight, and that is equal to 38. Okay, this is important. So it's not just two third of B equals 38 plus eight. Why? Because initially I had sold so much, but then eight came back. This is equal to 38. Now, what is the value of B? B in the sense that original. So you take this eight to the other side, it becomes 38 minus eight, that is three. And this is two thirds, that will be equal to multiply three by two. So this is the thing, multiply three by two over here as well why you're multiplying this inverse must be multiplied on both the sides to balance this will be cancelled off and over here you will have 15 times 3 is 45 so there were 45 basketballs originally okay um okay so now i did some some error i believe no sorry i i think so i have chosen the wrong answer over here see this is the thing two-thirds of the basketballs were sold okay i made a mistake over here i thought i'll just edit this part but i'll leave it because it's a good mistake and everyone can learn from this i will t i'll read this over here sporting goods store sold two-thirds two-thirds were gone sold but eight were returned now the store has 38 basketballs now the thing what I did is I took two thirds which were sold. That is wrong. What is this? Now the store has 38 remaining. So now imagine you have 15, uh, say 15 something, 15 chocolates. Okay. Two thirds of this you gave away. You gave away, you sold it or you gave it to your friends. Okay. Two thirds of this would mean 10. 10 are gone how many are remaining this is two-thirds how many are remaining five are remaining this is one-thirds so what i had to do is two-thirds were sold so how many are remaining it is one minus two-thirds that is one-thirds were remaining this was a major mistake what i did it is one-thirds i hope this is clear 
now it's not about how much we sold it's how many remaining right so two two of three parts were gone so remaining is only one of three part that was remaining so now if i do like this one part two part this was sold what is remaining only one part one by three was remaining out of total three parts so what i had to write is one third of basketballs plus eight return means it'll be more equals 38 now this is the correct equation take the eight to the other side with 30 one third of b so you multiply with three on both the sides to balance it out this cancels and b equals 90 and this option c is the correct answer i hope this is clear now i'm i'm um, uh, I have kept the mistake over here. I'm glad I did that because you can learn from it and uh, don't do the silly mistake what I just now did in your exams. So make sure you read it properly. Don't be in a hurry. Read it properly and then solve it up. Here then we have another problem. Some equations have coefficient represented. Okay, there are C. There is a variable and there is another coefficient which is also unknown. So how do we solve this? It's very simple. It's just that you can't put this in calculator and solve. You need to manually solve it. So what happens is AX equals subtract 7 on both the sides. This cancels over will be minus 7. So all I have to write is 5 minus 7. Now AX equals negative 2. What about this coefficient? Take it to the other side. It was multiplying. It becomes negative 2 divided by A. Now this is the answer. So you can see AX will be minus 2 by A. That's the answer. Now it is not equal to 0. Why? Think about it. Think about it because you will come to know this in your future grades. But anyways, try something like this. Minus 2 divided by 0. What's the answer? If you're thinking 0, 1, 2, it's wrong. It's undefined. It's, it's not true. Why? Because you're dividing something by nothing. So if it was, say, 10 divided by 2, this means how many times 10 can be arranged in terms of 2? This is basically 5. You can have 10 chocolates in groups of to five times you know that's what it means so but you're if you're dividing by zero zero is nothing isn't it so how many times you can rearrange ten by nothing you can do it one two three you can do it infinite times basically so the answer will go up to infinity uh, that's why we call it a math error and therefore you must always remember whenever you have an unknown variable divided by like this if this is not given over here, in your option it might be there, you need to choose the correct answer. In this case, A can never be equal to zero. Always denominator cannot be equal to zero. That is the most important thing what you must remember. So that's that. And here you can solve this. Okay, these are the options. Sadly, the answer is over here already. Um, D is the correct answer. I forgot to you know edit this it is 10 divided by a how you just need to solve this take this two to, okay now here let's take this two to the other side it'll be minus a x equals minus 8 minus 10 so it'll be minus a x equals minus 10 sorry over here it's minus 2 why because you need to subtract 2 on both the sides now then you can swap the signs to make it positive why because you can multiply both the sides by minus one it'll be positive then okay or else i'll write it it'll become plus ax equals plus 10 and now you have to just take a to the other side it'll be x equals 10 divided by a remember a cannot be equal to zero that's the answer and that's the end of this lesson it's a very simple lesson it is just a continuation of what we had studied in the last two lessons first lesson where we read um, equations and everything so we yeah, there were real world problems you need to read properly and then answer and the next lesson was one step equation in this lesson multi-step we just do one step many times you know basically it's multi-step i hope you have uh, understood it and you have learned something new uh, please do stay tuned. I will release the next 
lesson as well shortly. Bye-bye for now.